Hi, this is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor, and welcome to another episode of Executive Tuna. Now, if you've seen any trainings at all uh, in corporate America, you'll see there's a lot about emotional intelligence or EQ, emotional quotient, which is sort of a, a parallel or a cousin to um, IQ, which is you know intellectual quotient. So today we're going to talk about two discrete and distinct benefits that you can really get out of it because for a lot of people they understand very naturally or intuitively why IQ is important but it may not be exactly clear how the EQ can help you in a business setting right because it's not just about making friends it's about getting business done being product being productive and you know moving up in your career with executive presence so join us for our next conversation and where we'll talk about benefits of EQ Okay, so what are the two benefits of EQ? And by EQ, I mean having um, a higher ability to understand what's going on from an emotional perspective, from feelings, uh, people's state of being, whether that's your own or others. So let's take a look at the first benefit. And this benefit, um, I want to use an example. I did a podcast, a Why It Works podcast with Justin Barizo. Um, he's an author of EQ Applied. He also uh, writes quite a bit for Inc.com. And we had a wonderful conversation about why uh, EQ works and what it's all about. And one thing that he said to me um, really resonated from the interview. And it was about how he explained EQ to his son and you know in terms that uh, anyone could understand and so it was not so much about controlling your emotions or how you feel it's understanding when you do feel something and deciding what the best response is of it are you going to do something in response to that feeling that helps or hurts right it's not always so binary, but typically it's pretty clear that there's something you can do that would not be so helpful in the situation. And there's something else that maybe you don't want to do, but would actually be much more helpful, like maybe apologizing or admitting you're wrong, not talking from personal experience at all. So that's benefit number one of EQ. And that's really directed kind of internally to yourself and, and how you operate. And I think a lot of people kind of get that intuitively. They, they understand like, of course, if, if I can manage myself better, then I'll be better as a leader and I'll get better results. However, there's a second benefit which should not be overlooked. And I love having these interviews with people because uh, I learned so much from them. And I recently had an interview on Executive Presence Morsels uh, the daily leadership podcast that I do with Hannes Bend. He's the CEO of Breathing AI, which is this cool company where they try to combine the benefits um, of breathing, you know, similar to the benefits you might get from Wim Hof or, you know, uh, deep breathing meditation, uh, and combine it with the fact that we're like on our devices all day and technology and kind of trying to merge those two um, to how you can get the benefit of, of breathing and being calm, uh, even when you're using lots of devices, which isn't always conducive to it. So I'm talking to Hannes about it, and he related this wonderful story to me about a situation where his breathing actually came into play. And as I was listening to it, I was thinking, wow, there's a lot of EQ wrapped up in there as well. So basically what happened was, you know, Hannes is the CEO of the company. He's working on a, on a computer. He steps away for a little while, and he comes back, and one of his employees is on the computer and in the process of using that shared computer has wiped out all of the CEO's data and work from that session. Now, you can imagine that can go uh, one of two ways, right? So, so Hannes got to that point, that crossroads that Justin was talking about and thinking, well, you know, what do I do? Do, do I explode on this person or do I try to go to problem solving mode? And the breathing aspect was, you know, he instituted some of his own techniques that he teaches others to do that deep kind of belly breathing where you really breathe into your diaphragm and breathe out. And it really helps you reset and calm yourself. So he was able to get 
to that point where he's like, you know what, I'm going to choose door number two, which is not to freak out on my employee who made an honest accident and go into problem solving mode. And here's the thing uh, about that. Because he did that, a couple things happened. One, the employee who made the mistake, who's also probably in a really good position to help fix the mistake, was able to not be worried about losing their job, getting yelled at, getting embarrassed, and instead was able to focus all their mental energy on, okay, how do we solve this problem to the extent it can be solved? So was able to enter into problem-solving mode as one of the key players. Now imagine someone yells at you, even if you still want to participate, you're distracted and you're not really thinking at your highest and your best. The second thing that happened was other people were there too. It wasn't just Hannes and this employee. And they saw that he handled this understandably like red alert situation with equanimity, which is one of the six degrees of executive presence I talk about, with compassion, right? With, with loyalty and also with perspective, right? Like, you know, to, to really go crazy on someone because of something that they did, uh, could be justified in one instance, but maybe if it's something that, ah, you know what, we lose a couple hours work, we can fix it, probably not justified as well. So it actually gained a lot of leadership credibility from people seeing that and saying, wow, this is the kind of leader that I want to work for who practices what they preach and in a difficult situation can still lead with calm and executive presence. So that's another benefit uh, that when you can control and understand your own emotions and those of others and operate in a way that's more effective, you actually get much better business results rather than just giving your knee-jerk response um, because you can't you know, respond any other way, whether that is the better business result or not. So those are our two benefits of EQ. One is more just yourself, choosing your response, whether you want to choose the one that helps or hurts. And of course, you have to be aware of what you're experiencing first for that to happen. So thanks, Justin, um, for sharing that insight with us. And second is um, being able to manage in terms of how you can help others respond in a situation because you your mood your energy your emotions can help set the tone for how others respond as well and that's a great leadership quality to have so thanks so much Hannes for sharing that excellent story about that so I want to thank you for coming in to executive tune-up my name is Joe Kwan the connection counselor if you get a chance if you want to listen to a daily podcast five to ten minutes on executive presence i highly recommend executive presence morsels it's at anchor.fm slash executive presence one word that's anchor.fm slash executive presence and i'll leave uh the link uh in, in in the description to the video remember to do your best you have to be at your best. So tune in to tune up.